Yeah. Should do this every single time. Yeah, there we go. Best memory. Can't see my else. Yeah. All right. Yeah. This is what they go Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's five. Mm -hmm. Oh, you okay? Yeah, you did. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I know <laughs> 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 Good evening. Welcome to the Rose Tree Media School District Board of School Directors Legislative Meeting. This meeting is called to order. Please stand if you are able for the Pledge of Allegiance and please remain standing for the national anthem that will be sung by the Media Mustang Chorale directed by Mrs. Jeanette Verdura. Thank you, Media Mustang Corral. Dr. Scott, please take the roll. Hillary Fletcher. Here. Jackie Gusick. Here. Susan Henderson Utis. Here. Robert Kelly. Here. Susan Lane. Here. Kelly Schaefer. Here. Joy Chen. Here. Jason Lanka. Here. Neil Sen. Ken Dennis. Here. Teresa Napson Williams. Here. Madam President, we have a quorum. 
of Madam President, I would like to make a motion to amend the agenda to include a motion to approve the appointment of a classified employee. I recommend this motion to be placed under Article 10, Addendum Letter A, Item Number 7. Um, Madam President, the reason for this amendment is that the Office of Human Resources was notified by the candidate at 8.30 a.m. this morning, March 23rd, 2023, that she accepted the job offer. This candidate she has needed to start in mid-April and the approval cannot wait until the next legislative meeting. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. All in favor? Oh, I'm sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, motion passes. Put it at the, the end at the human resources addendum number seven. All right, let's start. Let's move to the approval of minutes. I suggest we group uh, A, B, C, and D together. Is there any objection to this? Hearing none, is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Okay, we'll move to the presentations and awards. Um, we're going to start with the distance medley relay team. Resolve the Board of School Directors present the Rose Tree Media Award to Brendan Hefferin, Benjamin Holst Wrightley, Rory McAfee, and Gavin Mogos for earning second place state medals. This team was coached by Dion Durnell. <laughs> We'd also like to congratulate the four by 800 relay team, uh, resolve the board of school directors, present the Rose Tree Media Award to Brendan Hefferin, Benjamin Holst Wrightley, Rory McAfee, and Caden Salaria for their silver medal at States. They missed the, they missed the gold by one one thousandth of a second. They now have the fifth fastest indoor four by 800 time in the United States. I'm not finished. And the, and the third fastest four by 800 time in Delaware County. And they are the fastest for Delco public schools. And the team was coached by Dion Durnell. Congratulations. Next up, we have an Eagle Scout. Resolve, the Board of School Directors present the Rose Tree Media Award to Peter Valtos for receiving Eagle Scout recognition. All right, so my Eagle Scout project uh, was completed this past uh, May. Uh, for the or for the project, I did the uh, I did a trail system at the uh, Ponds Edge Residential. Uh, we put in a bridge. Uh, we built or we dug a switchback, and we laid some stepping stones so that the residents have some place to walk and enjoy the beautiful nature.
Now we'd like to recognize our National Merit Commended Students. Resolve the Board of School Directors recognize the National Merit Commended Students, Allison Calderon, McKay Greenlaw Scully, Colin McBoy, Kennedy Quayle, Elsa Simon, Ella Sluteris, and Kevin Hugh. More than two thirds of the approximately 50,000 high scorers on the PSAT NMSQT received letters of commendation and recognition of their outstanding academic promise. Commended students are named based on a nationally applied selection index score. Some of these students do become candidates for special scholarships sponsored by corporations and businesses. Congratulations to our commended students for their dedication to excellence. We also have national merit finalists. Resolve, the board of school directors recognize the national merit students, Samuel Kleiman, and James Sparling. The National Merit Scholarship Program is an academic competition for recognition and scholarships. Of the 1.5 million entrants, some 50,000 with the highest PSAT, NMSQT selection index scores, qualify for recognition in the National Merit Scholarship Program. 15,000 semifinalists advance to finalist standing based on their abilities, skills, and accomplishments. Congratulations to our finalists for their exemplary dedication to academic excellence. Let us move on to our student liaison reports. Hi, my name is Joy Chen and I'll be sharing updates from Glenwood and Media Elementary Schools. At Glenwood Elementary School, the hallways are lined with artwork from students in grades one through five for families and students to enjoy. Thank you to Mr. Sharp and his team for guiding the students to create art that includes all time periods self-portraits, self-designed sneakers, ancient Egyptian cats, and much more. Glenwood has been celebrating Black History Month and Women History Month. The equity team posted beautiful pictures and information about African-American heroes. The social studies coordinator, Kristen Harkness, organized a hidden figure scavenger hunt for all students to learn about influential women. In a PTG-sponsored assembly, the Bright Star Entertainment Group presented Black History's groundbreaking geniuses to Glenwood students. The students learned about famous African Americans from the first hand perspective. Glenwood students celebrated Read Across America Week by participating in different reading themed spirit days. Sprinton Lake and Penker students visited and read their favorite books to students. Also, author and illustrator Nick Brule of the Bad Candy book series visited Glenwood for an interactive assembly, sharing his writing process. At Media Elementary School, Three fifth grade media elementary students have contributed to our student led morning announcements. A few months ago, they recognized the female athletes did not have as much recognition as male athletes on the news and even in our own morning announcements. Now, during announcements every Friday, these students share our female athletes' accomplishments. We are so proud of these young ladies for being a voice in equality. For Women's History Month, first graders have been learning about memorable women who have left an impact at their work. Students created rockets in honor of Mae Jemison the first African-American woman who went into space. They followed step-by-step -step directions to draw a shark and set it in an underwater scene 
in honor of the shark lady, marine biologist Eugenie Clark. The first graders also use their creative thinking and problem solving to build STEM inspired sleds after learning about the first woman to win the Ida Tarad dog, dog sled race, Libby Riddles. Then they revamped their sleds by taking some materials away after learning about the word conserve with the activist Greta Thunberg. Media celebrated Read Across America Week through read alouds and a spirit week. Each morning started with Mrs. Millette seeing a poem stanza over morning announcements. Then students listened to read alouds from Springton Lake students, Mrs. Stoddard, Mrs. Shriver, and parents. Our primary students partnered with third, fourth, and fifth grade students for buddy reading. Each day had a theme revolving around literacy, which ranged from hats off to authors and illustrators to exercise your brain by reading. My name is Neil Sen, and I'll share news from Indian Lane Elementary Schools and uh, Rose Tree Elementary Schools. At Indian Lane, third grade students are currently studying chick embryology in coordination with 4-H Club and Penn State University. For 21 days, the embryos grow inside of the incubators. Each class takes care of 12 eggs the week before they hatch. Then on day 21, the eggs hatch. If we're lucky enough, we get to watch one or two of them break out of their shells. They'll feed them, give them water, and play with them for a whole week before going back to the 4-H club. Our unified bocce team earned both the gold and bronze medals in the Special Olympics Elementary School Bocce Tournament, which was held at Jefferson University. Unif unified bocce provides our students the opportunity to work together, improve their physical fitness, and grow self-confidence. Mrs. Miley's kindergarten class celebrated the start of the spring with two rainbow-themed weeks. Each morning, the kindergartners started their day with a, free with a free choice of Rainbow Center, which included puzzles, noodle patterns, and fine motor activities. They sang rainbow songs at morning meeting <clears throat> while using egg shakers as musical instruments. The students also read rainbow books, wrote about rainbows, and even did a rainbow science experiment. At Rose Tree Elementary School, the community, including administrators, parents, special guests, and the middle school students celebrated Read Across America earlier this month. Additionally, the students raised almost $7,000 for the Read for the House program at Philadelphia at Philadelphia's Ronald, Ronald McDonald House. All students participated in Art Goes to School, which makes fine art accessible to elementary age students. The visiting art volunteers encouraged the students to look, listen, and feel the works of art when they brought in reproductions of various pieces. Rose Tree celebrated Rock Your Socks Day on March 21st in recognition of World Down Syndrome Day by wearing brightly colored mismatched socks. Thank you to Mrs. Chris McGuire for organizing the event and to the members of the Starfish Club for selling mismatched socks to raise funds for the Down Syndrome Association of Delaware. Hello, everybody. My name is Jason Lanka, and I'll share current events from Springton Lake Middle School and Pancrest High School. Firstly, at Springton Lake Middle School, parents and community members presented about their career during grade level assemblies on career day. They shared their education, daily routines, and what they have to do to be successful in their positions. Students heard from a physician, an IT director, a psychologist, and many more. Congratulations to the Science Olympiad team, which placed sixth in the regional competition at Penn State Abington and qualified to compete at the state competition on April 22nd, 2023. After rehearsing for four months, Springton Lake students presented Shrek the Musical on March 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. The auditorium was packed for each of the three performances. Springton Lake was once again redesignated as a Pennsylvania school to watch which demonstrates a commitment to continuous improvement and to providing rigorous and developmentally responsive middle level program. Dr. Saladino, Dr. Layton, and Mrs. Brin accepted the award on behalf of Springton Lake at the Pamela State Conference on February 26th. The school will be presented with a banner at an assembly in May and additional recognition will be received in June at the National Schools to Watch Conference in Washington, <coughs> D.C. Lastly, at Pancrest High School, the 2027 Class Council decorated the cafeteria in an enchanted forest theme and then hosted a 250 freshman students during the freshman formal on Friday, March 3rd. Speaking of them freshmen, 
Congratulations to Pancras Freshman's boys basketball team for its first undefeated season in the team's history. Thank you to coaches Malcolm Williams and Aiden Carroll, who led the boys to a 16-0 record. On Thursday, March 2nd, the Human Relations Club sponsored a multicultural field trip to Washington, D.C. 48 students visited many sites and museums, including Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial, Korean War Memorial, and the National Museum of African Art. Students from our Spanish-speaking classes went on a week into Costa Rica, practicing their language skills and immersing themselves in the culture. They visited cacao and coffee farms that focus on sustainable agriculture and toured Toronto National Park and along the Caribbean to observe wildlife. Pancrest also held its first annual Black History Month oratorical contest on February 28th. The event highlighted the works of poet, educator, and activist Nikki Giovanni and her poem, Rosa Parks, which shines a spotlight on the Pullman Porters and their contributions to the civil rights movement. Students then wrote their own poems to highlight a modern Pullman partner and their contributions to an activism. Professional panel of educators judged the students' entries. Thank you. Thank you. It's always great to see what our students are doing. Uh, next up, we're moving to board liaison reports. Uh, Ms. Fletcher, do you have anything from DCIU or the Legislative Council? Thank you, I do have some things. I'm gonna start with PSBA and a reminder that Advocacy Day, though virtual, is still important. You can log into your PSBA account to register to add your voice to the hundreds of other school directors who will share their concerns with state legislators on that day. Registration closes April 7th. Um, in an effort to best support the needs of its members, PSBA will be restructuring the 2023 sectional meetings. The next meeting titled Improving School Safety and Security will now be held as a webinar on April 4th from 6 to 7.30. You can find more information about that on the PSBA website. In legislative news, the Pennsylvania Department of Education announced that $1.5 million in grant funding is available to institutions of higher learning that partner with school districts to expedite the process of becoming a special education teacher. As a reminder, Pennsylvania is facing a major shortage of educators across the state. A decade ago, roughly 20,000 teacher certifications were issued each year. In 2021, about 6,000 were issued. This has impacted special education as much as any group of educators. Um, in case you missed it, Governor Shapiro's $44.4 billion budget calls for spending over $1 billion more for pre-K to higher education and $100 million more for workforce development initiatives. Um, additionally, lawmakers in the education community are still trying to figure out where he stands on school choice. Currently, there is a flurry of proposed and recently introduced bills that stem from uh, requiring science classes to teach about the impact of littering to requiring schools to keep Narcan on hand. I'll keep you updated as any of those proposed uh, pieces of legislation move forward. Um, to let you all know, uh, if we haven't yet, Teresa and I have been meeting, or Dr. Williams and I have been meeting with our local representatives to share what is important to our district and public education. We've been talking about the impact of unfunded mandates as well as the need for more supports for student mental health. And finally, in DCIU and Technical School News, Pencrest student Erica Ricard was recently inducted into the Delaware County Technical School National Technical Honor Society. Her course of study is Medical Careers, and we uh, send her big congratulations. Thank you, Ms. Fletcher. Uh, the work session highlights and reports are included in the minutes, so we'll move to the superintendent's report. Mr. Dockey. Thank you. In just a few minutes, the board will be voting to approve the appointment of our new superintendent, Dr. Joseph Malash. I would like to begin this report by offering Dr. Malash a warm welcome to the Rose Street Media School District. Dr. Malash is joining our school community as an experienced, well-respected and accomplished educator. And we are looking forward to working with him for many years to come. I would also like to take this opportunity to recognize one of our many unsung heroes within our administrative team. Last month, Dr. Kimberly Lacoste, special education supervisor, 
received the School of Education and Human Services Distinguished Alumni Award from Newman University. Dr. Lacoste is a humble and fierce advocate for students and a valued member of our team. Congratulations on this well-deserved honor. I'm also proud to announce that three of our teachers have won the Franklin Mint Credit Union Excellence in Teaching Award and will be honored at the annual awards dinner next month. Dana Welk is a first grade teacher at Media Elementary School. Devin Hartzell is a special education teacher at Springton Lake Middle School. And Kristen Harkness is a kindergarten teacher at Glenwood Elementary School. Congratu congratulations to you all on this outstanding distinction. And lastly, I want to announce changes to our current, current school year calendar that the Board of School Directors will be voting on tonight. Friday, June 9th will be a non-student day and an in-service day for teachers. This will allow all teachers to attend the Pencrest High School graduation ceremony at Newman University. The last day of school for students will not change and remains as a half day on Friday, June 16th. This concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Doherty. Uh, we'll move to the solicitor's report, Mr. Kelly. Thank you, Madam President. The board has my written report for the, on the Glenwood uh, Elementary School uh, parking lot project. Since writing my report, I have received drafts of the development and security agreements, which I'm reviewing, and that should be ready for approval by the board by uh, next month. Uh, we're also working on the uh, letter of credit for that. Dr. Scott is working on that. So that project is moving uh, along uh, as scheduled. The uh, object of having the parking lot completed by uh, the end of the summer of this year. And that concludes my report, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Keller. I have a brief president's report. Members of the Rose Tree Media School District community, as you may know, recently the Edgemont Township Board of Supervisors rejected the school district's plan to build an elementary school in Edgemont Township. As a result, the school district has initiated legal proceedings in an effort to reverse that action by the Edgemont Township Board of Supervisors. As this process moves forward and to the extent permissible, the school district will keep the Rose Tree Media community informed. Thank you for your continued support of the students and families of the Rose Tree Media School District. We now have uh, scheduled presentations uh, from the Rose Tree Media Education Association, Mrs. Jeanette Verdure. Good evening. Tonight, the Rose Tree Media Education Association would like to recognize the Franklin Mint Federal Credit Union Excellent in Teaching recipients, Kristen Harkness, Devin Hartzell, and Dana Welk. Congratulations on this well-earned achievement, and we are all RTMEA proud. We would also like to congratulate Dr. Joseph Lamash. May I say your name correctly, please? Malash. Malash, thank you. Malash on being selected as the next superintendent of schools. Our union is composed of 332 energetic and extremely enthusiastic educators, and we look forward to working with you. During March, schools across the Commonwealth and across the country are celebrating Music in Our Schools Month. As you may know, I'm a member of the music faculty here at Rose Tree Media. I would like to take a moment to honor the talent and commitment of the music department and give you a snapshot of what musical happenings occur in our district throughout the school year. Did you know our 14 music faculty instruct over 70% of the student body in grades one through 12? We lead 52 different performing groups and will hold about 194 live performances in the course of a school year. We work many nights and weekends, sometimes with supplemental compensation, but sometimes not. We hold advanced degrees in music and in education, and every one of us has some type of musical gig outside of our teaching hours. We are highly qualified, hardworking professionals. We boast students who have achieved elite status in their performing area. And that includes nine students that right now are at the Region Band Festival with Mr. Snyder and their concerts tomorrow evening. We're very proud of those Pencrest students. We celebrate those who continue on with music beyond high school, those who are now professional musicians, composers, music engineers, and educators. And we are thrilled to inspire all of our students to seek the enjoyment of music that this world has to offer. We count on supplemental positions to staff many of the district performing groups. Some groups are co-curricular, 
but most are extracurricular. This department currently has professional staff leading music groups gratis, not fully by choice. We have supplemental positions in the contract, but we also have some that have to be split among several people so we can adequately staff our largest ensembles, primarily at the high school. Our department is asking the board to consider these shortfalls in staff and funding and work to address the inequities so we can rightly compensate the talented people who work with our aspiring musicians in Rose Tree Media. Our department has identified and prioritized our needs and we will share with them with you before the next school board work session. Thank you. All right, next up we have unscheduled presentations. If any district residents are interested, please make sure you sign up in the back. District residents and taxpayers wishing to address the school board are encouraged to do so at this time. Written items are strongly suggested. Speakers should state their name and their municipality for the record before commenting. Comments are limited to three minutes. The school board may suspend the public comment period after a reasonable amount of time. Use of profanity, shouting, or personal attacks are discouraged. Please note the public comment period is intended to provide an opportunity for citizens to address the board. However, it is not an opportunity to participate in public debate or question and answer dialogue. Therefore, contact information should be provided to the administration and the board so that the school district can follow up with citizens' concerns following the meeting. And we're just taking a pause. We're waiting for a few people to sign up. First up, we have Cynthia Sabatini. Good evening, Cynthia Sabatini, Upper Providence Township. First, I'd like to welcome aboard the new superintendent. We'll have the opportunity to hear directly from the taxpayers about the good, the bad, and the ugly of Rose Tree Media School District. I'd like to talk tonight about the current budget in part. In the current proposed budget, there's a 15.5% increase in legal expenses. Is this the legal inflation rate or is this almost 16% increase necessary to further engage in battle with the citizenry of Edgemont who were successful in their fight to maintain existing zoning where the district wants to build a new school. If the latter, why is this board so laser focused on building a school in an area that is unequivocally not zoned for institutional purposes? Is it because you've already sunk 1.25 million to buy an adjacent parcel? Is there some other reason which makes you unwilling to give it up? Something appears to be rotten in the state of Denmark. Why do you want to spend the taxpayers' monies on unnecessary legal and consultant fees while at the same time asking for a tax increase of up to 4.1% for school year 2023-2024? Why are you putting your own Edgemont taxpayers in a position whereby they have to spend their own monies to launch a legal defense of their right to residential zoning. Can you please answer these questions for the taxpayers, particularly the one about the obsession with the residentially zoned Edgemont site? Thank you. Ron Peterson. Thank you. 
Hi there, Ron Peterson, Middletown Township. Uh, the outdoor track season started a few weeks ago, and I was out looking at the track here at the middle school, and I noticed that there are no lane markers. There's no baton exchange zones marked, not even a finish line mark on this. It is, after all, a dirt track. And it occurred to me, how is it that a district with the resources we have still has a dirt track for the middle school athletes? You know, that football field out there has a lot to be desired as well. Imagine my surprise when, admittedly, not too long ago, I found out Pencrest has a swim team, but they don't have a pool. This is absurd. Now, last year, the district ran a surplus of $2.9 million after the budgeted transfer to capital funds. $2 million of that was transferred into the capital reserve fund. According to the March budget comparison report, we are presently running $5 million ahead in tax revenue over last year. And we're only about $2 million ahead in expenses, a net $3 million difference. Now, I know things can change. There's bills I'm not privy to and all that stuff. But I think we are looking at another multi-million dollar surplus. Now, in October 2018, the school board authorized borrowing $40 million to preemptively to prepare for building a new school. That was done on a 10-year term, meaning we taxpayers are on the hook for paying this off in 2028. Actually, it's 2029. It also means that the debt was front-loaded on the current taxpayer for building a school that will last 40 to 50 years. Now, I think it was in early 2020, but there was a presentation outlining capital projects to be funded. Now, half of this money was supposed to go to building the new school. We haven't had a presentation since, and it's like a big, giant secret every time I ask about the capital projects. Now, the new school in question is on hold. As we just heard, the district has entered litigation to force Edgemont to reverse its decision. Now, the district may win that. But the resolution is likely a year, maybe two down the road. Now, I estimate that there is presently $18 million left in this bond fund. What is the school board going to do with it? I have a suggestion. I think the school board needs to just kind of scrap this step back and say, we need to use this money now to upgrade our facilities that will benefit the students today. After all, we taxpayers are paying for this right now. Once you have these things in mind, give us a presentation. So we know what your priorities are. I, for one, would start with that track. You start now, you can have that thing built by, by fall and have the football field ready. Now, we're kind of due for such a thing. How about we use this money that we have now to upgrade our facilities that's actually befitting of Rose Tree Media? Thank you. Gregory Clark. I'm Greg Clark of Edgemont Township. I want to thank members of the board for allowing me chances to share this evening. I also want to welcome you, Superintendent. Nice to have you with us. So I have the uh, honor of serving our students and district parents as the president of the Pencrest Band Parents Association. It's a volunteer opportunity that I truly treasure because it gives me a chance back to the music program that's given so much to my family and many others already. Our son is a sophomore clarinet player in the marching band and concert band, and he plays bass drum on indoor percussion. And he actually recently spent the entire summer with me cleaning out an old bathroom and converting it into a storage closet for the band. That's uh, not something a kid normally signs up to do for the summer break, I'll have to say. But band has proven itself to be a wonderfully supportive, challenging, and engaging environment for him. And I've had numerous conversations with many other parents who attest that band has done the same for their child. The kids truly do put their hearts into band, and the benefits are reflected in the academic, social, and communal parts of their lives. However, I know that this success is not just student based. Our various bands and color guard are supported by amazing volunteers and staff. And as I know the discussion today brought up around increasing budget for support staff, I would like to offer the recommendation and support for this for my family, our band parents association and the many families who've conveyed their support to me. More specifically, I hope that support will be given to provide compensation for our color guard leader, Leanne Fields, who does high school and middle school guard, and Tony DeAngelis, who helps lead our jazz band. Tony, in more than 10 years of instructing the jazz band, has never received district pay. And the same is for Leanne, relative to the color guard she provides for the middle school. 
our jazz band just received the highest mark possible in your recent jazz competition. Some things I just ask you to consider relative to the band within our district is that compared to sports and other activities, it has one of the highest student participation rates. Band is a year long course and activity that differs from many sports like football, soccer, et cetera. Yet the funding is somewhat low compared to these shorter other season activities. Our funding for band is actually lower than schools within our other uh, districts in other areas like Garnet Valley, Great Valley, Swarthmore, and others. Band truly is a preparation for life. Students in our band are some of the highest achievers at Pencrest. Many of the students have exceptional grades and participate in other activities such as Science Olympiad, High Q, Student Government. We saw a National Merit Scholar, a Merit Scholar tonight, who are in band. They've also earned accolades in Rotary Club and National Merit. So I just ask in closing that as you think about the impact that the band has on these students' lives, please support those who help teach and guide and instruct them. And I thank you for your time. Chancy Achwat, and I apologize. <laughs> <clears throat> Chancy Aquat, I live in Media Borough. Um, I just wanted to reinforce what Fred has to say about the band. I'm also from the Band Parent Association. I have three kids in band, and they're all they're also all in jazz band. I have a, a senior, a junior, and a freshman. We started out with Miss Fedor, and um, it, it's a huge part of our lives. It's been a great community for them to excel in. In um, two of my daughters are at the regional competition right now one i found out she's made it to states so it's 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 something that they've embraced and have grown into the band kids the community there too is very inclusive um, it gives them a safe place to um, grow as a teenager in their high school years um, and it actually continues on after um, this past weekend there were some of the alumni were came to visit my daughter who has on spring break. Um, and I just feel like they would not, my children at least, would not be the great students and participators in you know, this school district and the community if it wasn't for this program. So I also support us trying to ensure um, proper funding to keep the individuals who uh, instruct our kids um, so that more kids will be encouraged to um, stay and maintain in the music program. Thank you. Michael Straw. Good evening. Michael Straw, and I live in Media Borough. Increasing transparency and improving communication should be goals that are strived for by all levels of government. At each one of these meetings, I have attended and I have found that there has been a lack of dialogue between residents and school board members, either during the public comment period or after the comment period. Recently, I've seen other members of the public within the school district express the same concerns. This may have been done during previous school board um, legislative meetings, but there's an opportunity here that we have. We have an opportunity to possibly open up public dialogue and comment during public comment on the privilege of the floor. Currently, I live in Media Borough. I've attended Media Borough meetings for about five years now. At each one of these meetings during the public comment period, which in fact we have two, we have one at the beginning of the meeting, one at the end. At the public comment period, after the public has given um, its comment, whether after the first comment or after all comments, the council president or uh, various other council members will give input and um, or answer questions. And I think that's rather important for residents be able to hear those answers right then and there, not necessarily after. And 
I also know that the Delaware County Council meetings and the Delaware County Election Bureau meetings or board meetings, comment is usually responded to either after all comments are submitted or if it's a simple question, right after um, that question is asked. I think we have an opportunity here uh, at Rose Tree Media School District to be able to open up public comment after, um, in, in terms of answering questions after it's been given at future meetings. I hope that you consider that. Thank you. Matt Cass. Good evening, my name is Matt Cass. I reside in Middletown. I'm the father of four beautiful children who currently attend Rose Tree Media School District. I wanna go on record saying I do not take their journey in education casually. <clears throat> I was just made privy to your decision to elect Joseph Malash as the Rose Tree Media School District's next superintendent. As I see it, you all up here on the stage have three functions. One, budget, two, policy, and the third thing is leadership. I want to I want to focus on the, the last of the three, that is leadership. Have any of you vetted in this individual? I have, and so is my family in New Jersey and a multitude of other people that reside in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. This individual is self-serving. We're about to enter in a soap opera with Mr. Malachi as the main character and star of the show. Our quiet community is about to be exposed by his bow tie an agenda, which I know is political fame. Never mind the rest, our children and our community who will suffer at the hands of his self-serving prophecy that will include taking education out of the boundary lines of our community as he pushes his own agendas on the community at large, all in the interest of self-proclamation. I hope you guys are ready to manage this. Yet again, another distraction that takes away from the teaching and learning of our children. You think we've had harassment, bullying, and intimidation issues in the past? Let me just point to the two most recent HIB suicides in Cherry Hill community, both of which your soon-to-be leader knew about but did nothing to support. I feel horrible for the parents who are grieving the loss of their babies, having brought their concerns to administration and leadership for many months. I feel as though you've all gotten way ahead of yourselves and clearly did not process before the task at hand. Look past the smoking mirrors and his most recent and meaningless accolades and look yourself in the mirror and ask if this was the best candidate for our community, for our children. I can say this with certainty. There is a majority in the Cherry Hill community where he was born and raised that are glad to see him gone. I stand here asking you to reconsider selection of Mr. Malach with sole interest of our community and our children. Dave Frederick. Gabriel Fredericks, I reside in Middletown Township. Um, uh, I'm also not here uh, to congratulate any new hires as I am disappointed in the lack of ethics used in making uh, your, your final decision. Uh, there is a major conflict of interest on your hands. Judith Wilson, who you hired, uh, to, 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 to do our search for a new superintendent uh, is also on the same pay, is also on the payroll of your proposed superintendent who you are uh, 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 looking to hire or, or have hired or, or, or who knows um, uh, the, the, the fact that the same firm in person that you hired 
to conduct uh, to conduct this search uh, is also on his his and his school's payroll is 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 a major conflict of interest, and I I, I don't know how any of you allowed that to happen, um, and and thought that that's the one we should pick. Uh, m m money and money in hands, it, it, it just unbelievable. Um, uh, th this this conflict uh, uh, clearly uh, uh, creates a cloudy landscape for this uh, uh, for the selection of this superintendent tendent, uh, uh, and and the fact that he was selected not solely on his merit um, uh, and being uh, and, and having the best track record. Um, our district deserves better from you. Um, Additionally, I'd also like to uh, say that I strongly agree with uh, Mr. Peterson. Uh, our district, you need to allocate more funds into our athletics, more resources. It is it is pathetic. I'm at I'm at softball fields in in Media Borough that 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 are barely fit for our high school. Why why we don't have those here? You know, it, it's just I, I could go on and on about about our athletics and the department. Maybe if we spent more time and resources in that, as you like to push in your DEI nonsense, maybe we'd see an increase in athletics. Those wanting to join them. Maybe we'd even see I, you mentioned earlier about a, a, a lack of people wanting to enter uh, uh, the, 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 the field of teaching. Uh, uh, may, maybe it's, you know, due to the constant. Uh, agendas that you seem to be pushing that our proposed superintendent is right on board with. Sean Keeney. Hi, I'm Sean Keeney. Uh, I have uh, three children who reside in Upper Darby uh, Township. Um, I'm going to read off some names. I'm going to wonder if anybody in the crowd or on the screen. I'm sorry, you said Upper Darby Township? Did I say Upper Darby? <laughs> I'm sorry, I live in Upper Providence. Uh, I'm going to read off some names. Uh, I want to know if anybody's ever heard of them before. Peter Salem, Wentworth Cheswell, John Marrett, Harry Hoosier. Charles Richard Patterson, Clara Brown, Stephen Smith, Paul Cuff, Sergeant William Carney, uh, and Bass Reeves. This is just a small number of people who I can run off of my list that I uh, have since learned about after my um, parochial and um, public education. Um, you know, I these are all black men and black women who have um, contributed in, you know, without word uh, to our founding of our great country. And um, I happened to read something that our new superintendent just happened to um, write in his own words. And uh, Mr. Malouche said that we need to start to look at a curriculum, not through a uh, Eurocentric perspective, but to highlight the black and brown excellence. I agree with you. We should highlight black, black and brown excellence, but we live in America where Eurocentric people are make up predominantly of where we come from. Now, I'm all about learning about black and brown and Chinese, but over in China, that's a Chinese perspective. Over in Africa, it's an African perspective. We're here for, for learning about excellence and meritocracy. It's about doing whatever you can, learning and doing the best of your ability to make, to make a difference in this uh, country. But we seem to keep on going about uh, equity and inclusion. So I had an idea on my way over here today. In light of equity and inclusion, how about you guys start taking your inflated salaries and give it to the person that cleans your toilet how about you start giving it to the lunch lady would that be equitable would that be inclusive you guys won't do that will you 
I know he won't. Let's start talking about America and their excellence and not getting off of equity and inclusion. Everybody can make a difference in this country. It doesn't matter who you are, black, brown, white, some clean toilets and some run schools. You got to get back to meritocracy in America. It's killing us. Kathy Buckley. Kathy Buckley, Edgewood Township. And I'm here again. Same problems. No one addresses it. Um, transparency is a huge problem here. We never see it. We get problem after problem after problem, and we have to pay for the problems you created over and over again. And then when you approach someone on this board, they tell you, you don't know what you're talking about. Right, Mr. Kelly? Transparency. No transparency, no transparency about the new school. It was just purchased and then jam it down Edgemont's Township, expecting them to change all their codes, even though you know what the codes are. Rules don't matter here, do they? Just change them, right? Because you decided to spend our money, taxpayer money on a school in a zone that is not zoned. There was 36 places you could have chose. You chose one on two gas lines in a residential area that's zoned for residential, not school. There's the Slayton School. You could have looked there. Nope, can't do that. Got to put it right where we say it is. Isn't that it? So far, I heard from right to nose that you pissed away 4 million taxpayers' money on this adventure of the new school. That's a low estimate. It did not have architects in it, did not have all the legal fees. How much are you spending of the taxpayer's money for a place that you bought knowing it was not zoned for R1? And you fight it. And you are fighting the people of Edgemont, making us look like the bad guys when you bought the property knowing it did not have an R1. It was not zoned for a school. Then we keep getting, oh, well, you don't know what you're talking about. No transparency again. Then you just hired a new superintendent. No one knew about it. We get dropped this bomb this week about it. Now I find out from all the internet, this guy has a history that is not good. I mean, what kind of person would sit there and not let students have a hot lunch because their parents with some financial insecurities didn't pay their bill? A local business volunteered to pay the bill. He said, no, we're not going to have you pay the bill. We have to prove a point. And he bullied students that have no financial income, I'm sure, and couldn't get lunch. That's what you hired. Again, transparency. But I just want to say about the meetings. We have work session meetings where the items that will be on the agenda are discussed. And we welcome and we have community input, people who ask questions at the work session. The legislative meeting are for the board to vote on the agenda items that we discuss at the work session. I just wanna make that distinction. Um, and I believe it's also on the website if people um, wanna go to it. So the work session is where we discuss items that will be on the upcoming agenda and community members, a few of them, a couple of them come um, and they ask questions. The legislative meeting, we of course provide an opportunity for uh, the community to speak, but it is in a, a time for the board to actually vote on what we've already discussed and what 
community members, a few of them have come and talked about with us. All right, so let's move on. We're going to old business. First up is the 2023-2024 school year calendar. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Let's go to new business, human resources. We'll start with A1, the retirement of professional employees. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Discussion? Um, I just want to make note about the, uh, the retirement of uh, five of our employees. Um, Dave Harple, the school counselor at Pencrest High School. Mr. Harple joined the staff of Rose Tree Media School District in 1988, and he is retiring after 36 years of dedicated service. Um, next, we have Robin Heckman family and consumer science teacher, Springton Lake Middle School. Ms. Heckman joined the staff of Rose Tree Media School District in 2003, and she is retiring after 20 years of dedicated service. Nancy Novello, the elementary classroom teacher at Indian Lane Elementary. Ms. Novello joined the staff of Rose Tree Media School District in 1985. She is retiring after 38 years of dedicated service. Marietta Rizone, English teacher at Pencrest High School. Ms. Rizone joined the staff of Rose Tree Media School District in 2012, and she is retiring after 11 years of dedicated service. And finally, Keith Sharp, the art teacher at Glenwood Elementary. Mr. Sharp joined the staff of Rose Tree Media School District in 1991. He is retiring after 32 years of dedicated service. And Dr. Naps and Williams, I wanna say, first of all, thank you. Um, my computer is slightly delayed and I really appreciate you taking the time to break down. These, these people have served an incredible, number of years of dedication. And I think it's not just the years, but it truly is the dedication. Uh, anybody who's been had the opportunity to have their children go through these, these halls have seen the work that um, you know, Mr. Harple, Ms. Heckman, Ms. Novello, Ms. Rizone, and uh, Mr. Sharp have all done. I know that my own daughter has a, a somewhat mangled bag from her time with uh, in Ms. Heckman's consumer science class. Uh, and, and so we, we do really wish these individuals the absolute very best. They have made Rose Tree Media District what it is. Um, and we will miss them, but we know that they will go on to uh, uh, spread joy and have joy in their retirement. So thank you. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. All right, we'll move to uh, A2. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? A second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, A3, approve the appointment of administrative employee. Uh, this agenda item, of course, is for the approval of our, our next superintendent. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Discussion? Yeah, I'd like to say um, I'm very excited to have the opportunity to vote uh, on the appointment of Dr. Joe Malaj as our uh, next uh, superintendent. Uh, we had a very intensive process uh, for many months looking for uh, the best possible 
uh, superintendent for our district who would put our children first always. And uh, we had the benefit of uh, Judy Wilson's help in uh, finding our candidates who uh, was also the consultant uh, for a previous iteration of this board when we chose a superintendent a few years ago before I joined the board. So uh, she was extremely professional. She brought forward a number of highly qualified candidates uh, and it became clear uh, certainly to me and I think to the rest of the board that um, over the time of multiple interviews, multiple references, writing samples, all um, the discussions that we had with the candidates that Dr. Malash is far and away the most qualified candidate uh, that we could have. And we're very, I personally, and I think the rest of the board is very excited to have an opportunity to welcome him tonight. So thank you. Um, and um, I would just add welcome. Um, I think we are so fortunate to have you come to Rose Tree Media. Um, of course, the interview process is a two-way street. So I thank you for also choosing um, to come here. Um, I will just echo what Ken said. Um, Dr. Malash has incredible experience, expertise. I think that you will bring tremendous value to our district. Um, and I can say as a parent in talking um, with other parents at school in recent days, there's a lot of excitement to have you come here and to get to know you. So welcome. I will not be as eloquent as either Kelly or Ken, but I do want to extend my sincere welcome. Um, I think you'll find Roastry Media to be a dynamic and exciting and welcoming place. Uh, and we look forward to working with you on the behalf of the betterment for our children in this district. Uh, we're very excited to have you join us, so thank you. All right, um, as we all know, Dr. Malash is in attendance tonight and so the board would like to welcome him up to the mic to uh, say a few words if you would like um, I'm sorry we're going to vote first <laughs> I'm sorry. we're going to take a vote first uh, let's see uh, is there a motion I'm all mixed up all right um, okay let's take a roll call vote Hillary Fletcher? Yes. Jackie Gusick? Yes. Susan Henderson Utis? Yes. Robert Kelly? Yes. Susan Lane? Yes. Kelly Schaefer? Yes. Ken Dennett? Yes. Teresa Napson Williams? Yes. Motion passes. And thank you, Dr. Malash, please. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Madam President, and the rest of the board. Uh, and to the Rose Tree Media community, I'm absolutely thrilled to stand here this evening. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed the process, the interview process that we spent time together uh, to talk about what you expect for the future of your school district, what I see and what I've learned about the future of your school district. And what I'm so excited about is what I've learned about the children and the staff members. The best part of any school district are the human beings who are here. You have beautiful facilities and incredible places but it's the human beings that occupy these buildings on a daily basis. I've heard incredible stories during the course of this week and during my research about the staff members that occupy each of the buildings and the work that they do with your children. And the best part of any community are the children that enter into our schools on a daily basis. <clears throat> to have the opportunity to come here and to work with such amazing people who desire incredible things for each and every child is exciting to me. After spending 30 years working in the state of New Jersey, I was ready and looking, and this is the place that I want to be. This is the place where I want to work or I want to spend, honestly, the next decade or so of my career. I'm excited to work in this community because there's a passion about education. And with a passion about education, it doesn't mean that everyone is always going to agree. I believe in healthy and civil discourse. I believe in the opportunity to talk to people about different ideas, different perspectives and what they want as long as everybody is pulling in the same direction for the best for our children. We can disagree, but we will come together and do what is best and do the right thing for the kids regularly. I'm looking forward to joining the team in July. I'll continue to be following along. I look forward to meeting people throughout the course of this spring, and I'm grateful. Uh, I think this is going to be an amazing partnership as we move forward together. 
This is such a successful school district and such a wonderful place to be. And I want to thank my wife, Anne, who's with me this evening, and the oldest of my four daughters, Abigail, who is also here tonight. Our family values education. Anne is also a teacher, and Abigail is a teacher. We value the importance of what it means for public school and to be part of an incredible public school district. So I look forward to seeing you all soon. I look forward to meeting the folks in the community that are here and ones that are watching and the ones that I'll get a chance to meet during the course of the summer and into the fall. So thank you for having me. Okay, all right, let's continue with human resources, new business. Uh, I suggest we group uh, A4 through 10 together. Is there any objection to this? Hearing none, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We'll move to B, the 2022-2023 calendar revision. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Moving the finance. I suggest we group A1, A, B, and C. A1, A, A1, B, and there's an A1, C. Is there any objection to me doing so? Hearing none, is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Okay, now we'll, we'll move to A1D. A1D, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Okay, I suggest we group B one through six and number eight. Number seven is being removed. I suggest we group B one through six and number eight. Number seven is being removed. Is there any objection to this? Hearing none, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. I just like to say thanks to the MAGS organization for item number three, the Barrel Field Scoreboard Replacement. They are a scrappy and tireless group and they really give it their all and appreciate all they do for that field. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. All right, moving to C, I suggest we group C one through four. Is there any objection to this? Hearing none, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Okay, we're, we're going to, let's see. I suggest we group D and E together. Is there any objection to this? Hearing none, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, we have an addendum for human resources. I suggest we group A, one through four together. Is there any objection to this? Hearing none, is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we have A5. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Discussion? Uh, yes, I just want to uh, briefly state that this um, particular um, uh, recommendation for changing and, and revision is based upon um, mutual agreement for making clarifying language. So it's been one of the special moments of a win-win situation in the human resources world and to make sure that the language is clear and that the system is clear for all parties concerned. And I do want to thank also um, the collecting uh, the different groups involved really putting forth their best faith and to make sure that everything could come to a nice amicable solution. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Let's move to A6. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Discussion? I just would like to reiterate essentially what I said for number five. Uh, these uh, five and six have a very similar situation. And I also do want to thank very much uh, the custodians um, and the bus drivers involved. Uh, again, a nice moment of win-win and recognizing that some clarification needed to happen. And I, I do thank every party for acting in good faith so that we can make this possible. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Now, of course, we added uh, A7 to the agenda at the beginning. It's the approval of the appointment of a classified employee. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. I am very excited and so glad that we're able to do this today. So um, I look forward to welcoming this individual on board. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We just wanna let the, the community know that there was an executive session before the legislative meeting held on February 23rd for matters of personnel and matters that must be conducted in private to protect a lawful privilege or confidentiality. And on March 1st, March 7th, and March 9th, 2023 for matters of personnel. The next work session meeting will be held at the Education Center on Thursday, April 13th, 2023. And the legislative meeting will be held on Thursday, April 27th, 2023 at Pencrest High School. Now we move to adjourn adjournment. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? I'm sure there's not. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion passes. Good night, thank you.